Let's go back to Ibadan. Iran C came in and he came in with Unification Decree 34. Yes, he did. That was one of the younger of the North. The fact he wanted to dominate the country with his striped men. Unification Decree 34, from what you know today, was that a right move by Iran? Say? Yes, it was a correct move. It was a correct move. But the timing was wrong. You could say the timing was wrong. And what, how did Iran say explain it? That the military has a unified command, which is the truth. Wherever you are in the army today, your boss is the general officer commanding, the chief of army staff is your boss. Anywhere you like, make you be in this country because it has a unified command. It wasn't like then when you had uh, the regions. When you had the regions, you couldn't go to Michael Opara's Eastern Nigeria and give any orders. It would not be respected. You couldn't go to Akintola's Western give any orders because you had those regional structures in place. But the army's direct leadership system overrode all those. You didn't have to take permission from the premier of uh, Northern Region to move your troops about in the north. That was, that was what happened. So the decree number 34 that you mentioned unified those services. That was not the grouse of the people. The grouse was that they said South, Southerners will not come and dominate their civil service which was not the intention, it was not in the letters, it was not in the spirit of the decree number 34. Now, I have a question to put, not just to you, but to the listeners. If decree number 34 was anathema, was uh, deplorable, was damnable and condemnable, why is it still in force today? Why is it still in force today? Because that's what we're still practicing. But that is what we are campaigning to stop. Well, we are talking of 1966 to now. Mm. Why is it that Gowon, Yakubu Gowon, was in, in office for nine years? Yes. Yes. In fact, Gowon's first decree was the nullification of decree number 34. On paper, he nullified it, but he practiced it through nine years. When they sacked him, Amari Tala came in. He practiced it for six months. When Obasanjo came in, before he handed over, he practiced for nearly four years. When Shehu Shagari came in, he practiced it for four years. Up to today, we're still there. So why are, you talk why are they talking about Decree 34, Decree 34? Why don't you change it? So the Igbo man brought it. The Igbo man did not bring it. The Supreme Military Council brought it. It was debated. L led by an Igbo man. The Igbo people were a minority in that Supreme Court. Go and look at the constitution of the Supreme Military Council. Signed by an Igbo man. That's not what I'm talking about. You are talking a different thing. A, 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 the Supreme Military Council takes a decision. You don't look at the Supreme Military Council. You don't look at its composition. You are looking at the person who signed it. Did he sign it in, on his father's name? If he did, did not he sign, sign it, it, how could he have rejected He Wait. He was the commander in chief. But you are talking of military and discipline. Yes, he's the commander and then, in chief. And then, and then, the military decides and they vote on something, and then he cancels it himself because he's commander in chief. Is that how? Is that how it's done? That's why they are dictators. No, that was not his kind of his brand of dictatorship. If he was a dictator, in the true sense of that word, he would just go on radio and announce. Nobody would debate anything. Remember, the constitution was relaxed. Therefore, and decree is dictatorship, is it not? Decree is dictatorship, but that's not what I'm arguing with you. I'm saying with you, I'm saying to you that that decree was not termed Iran's decree. It was termed unification decree. It wasn't his decree. It was a decree debated, and in this book. Chief Gabriel Onyuka said it. He was the Attorney General. 
He was a member of that council. It was debated for many sessions, and that as far as he knew, nobody opposed it. It's still in written form. But, Not even Hassan Usman Kassina. But his chief of army staff, Yakubu Gowon, worked against him. Perhaps because of that decree. No, it wasn't because of that uh, decree. That's why, you know, I've said, I've said it here that uh, Yakubu Gowon needs to make peace with his maker, peace with his conscience, and peace with history. 